Hello everyone, T Money here with the uh, my first thoughts um, after a few days trying a lair, playing around with it. Uh, Dark Knight at level 70. Okay, this is just first thoughts. Please do not come to this thinking it's a guide or anything like that. Um, it's just my initial thoughts of the job um, and what they have changed and whether or not some. And whether or not it's what Dark Knight actually uh, needed to stay competitive. Long story short, Dark Knight kind of got. I'm I'm kidding. Okay, there's just no better way to say it. Dark Knight got fucked this time around. Dark Knight got fucked bad. Got fucked bad. One freaking biggest thing that they did. This cross roll thing. I mean, it's it seems on paper brilliant. And they, they got some really cool things. I fucking love Shirk. Best thing I've ever seen. Um, reprisal going cross roll. That, I don't like, I didn't like that. It's good, but I don't like, and the fact that you can use it at any time. That's cool. That's awesome. Anticipation. Fucking useless. Awareness. Debatable. Ultimatum. What the fuck am I going to use ultimatum for? Are you fucking serious right now? Are you fucking serious? Ultimatum is fucking, you know, provoke nearby enemies, protecting you, like, I don't need an AoE provoke. You know, I, just fucking abyssal drain spam. If we're gonna get to abyssal drain versus unleash in a minute. Okay, um... Rampart is Rampart. It's, it's good. Uh, mandatory. You need that. Low blow, I think, is the most uh, frustrating change they made to tanks in general. Um, simply because every tank had an inherent stun, and now only Paladin has an inherent stun, not that you would ever use it, because it's uh, such a DPS loss, a TP loss, to use it. There's nothing in this game right now that'll kill you if you don't stun it versus a cooldown. So, if you're taking low blow as a tank, you're wrong. You're, you're just wrong. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, interject silencing a target. That might be mandatory for some raids later, but I, we're, it's, it's going to be a wait-and-see approach um, on that. Uh, since we don't know how the raids are going to work yet. Uh, it was, you had to silence things in A6S, so uh, that might be a thing. And I'd like to see, you know, I'd like to be able to play with it. Um, it's a 30 second cooldown, so it's probably going to be a thing where one tank will take reprisal, one tank will take interject. So, that could be a thing. Alright, but now let's talk into the Dark Knight itself. You'll probably notice uh, on my hotbar, let me just get rid of that real quick. On my hotbar, I am missing Dark Passenger. Why am I missing Dark Passenger? Now, here's why. When I was, when you're going leveling up, it wasn't that bad to have from 60 to 70. It wasn't that bad. It's still bloody brilliant in dungeons when you got like a ton of trash mobs, and I would still take it for trash mobs. But they nerfed its damage, and they nerfed its MP cost. Now, you might be saying, wait, what do you mean by nerf the MP cost? Well, it's double what it was. It used to cost half of your Dark Arts, so it used to say, like right now, it costs 1,200. It used to be, if you hit something with a Siphon Strike, you can Dark Arts, you can Dark Passenger. Well, now, unless you're in Grit, you're not going to get a Dark Passenger's worth of MP, and that MP is better spent on Dark Arts. So, Dark Passenger, it's a real gonna be a really really niche usage on a single target. I highly doubt it. I I played with it a little bit. I've I was a big supporter of having it, but I disagree completely in its implementation with the MP cost and everything. So I do not see it. So I, I took it off because it's right above my siphon strike. If I accidentally hit it, I'm fucked on MP. Now, they nerfed Dark Side. Or, I don't want to say it. I mean, it's depending on how you look at it. They nerfed it in the sense that it doesn't. If you run out of MP, your 
not going to lose it. If it's And it's also not going to go down. But they also buffed its damage, so I'm, I'm happy with the buff, but I'm not happy with that nerf. Uh, because Dark Knight is just way too... They lost... What was their difficulty? I, I, it was fun with having that MP cost, that MP thing. It felt like you were actually being sort of punished for being a Dark Knight. So, so the fantasy of the Dark Knight is kind of gone. Now, if they decide to put that MP cost back on, they're going to have to buff the fuck out of Second Strike. Or um, to make it to where it gives you a Dark Arts every time, not just when you're in Grit. Which is another thing. Siphon Strike in Grit is the only time you're going to get your full MP back for it. It's kind of debatable, but here's the thing. The Dark Knight, the Dark Knight DPS rotation is now... Let me show you. Siphon Strike, Dark, Dark Arts, and Siphon Strike Soul. Okay, we don't have Delirium. I know it says Delirium right there. Well, here's the thing, though. That's not damage. That's not a combo ability. They, they got rid of our Delirium. Sorry about that. They got rid of Delirium. Are you fucking kidding me? That could have just easily been a new ability. And we could have kept Delirium. That was the worst thing I've ever seen. They changed Delirium to an off-global that restores MP. Now, it does extend your blood weapon by 8 seconds and blood price by 16 seconds. Not that blood price is fucking worth anything now. Only restores, like, freaking that much MP. Like, when you've got, like, almost 9k HP. So, when you've got this... I mean, when you get when when you have a job that is as MP thirsty as Dark Knight, you cannot have any nerfs to your MP regen. I've found myself more often not Dark Arts in Carbon Spit, which is simply amazing. By the way, a 450 off global that is fucking beautiful because I need Carbon Spit's MP to do a Dark Arts Blood Spiller which is 520 potency. Now, that being said, with um, what they've changed, I would love to see Delirium go back to being Delirium. It doesn't even need the intelligence down. It just needs to be a regular hitting ability. Siphon Strike should not be Dark Arts. The only things you should be Dark Artsing is Soul Eater, Blood Spiller, Quietus when you got like a kajillion mobs in front of you, and Dark Passenger when you got a kajillion mobs in front of you, or Dark Mind when you're about to take a huge ass Magic Tank Buster like A12S. Yeah, that's Alright. Now, let's talk about some of the new abilities that Dark Knight got. Alright? First off, Delirium. We kind of covered that. It's not exa It's great having that, but it shouldn't be called Delirium. Delirium should be back where it is. An original, uh, uh, just a regular attack skill. It should be a new skill entirely. Quietus. Quietus. Now we're going to read what it does. Delivers an attack with a potency to 100, of 160 to all nearby enemies, with a dark art potency of 210, and it costs 50 blood gauge. So half your blood gauge. Or rather, half your blood gauge when it's full. This is an awesome skill to have, and it's completely, in my opinion, replaces uh, Dark Passenger in your AoE rotation. Because it's as much potency as... Well, actually, it's more potency than Invisible Drain, which you should spam more. And if you Dark Arts it, it's even more potency. So it's, it's a gain. It's better than Dark Passive. Alright, next new skill you get, Blood Spiller. Delivers an attack with a potency of 380. Dark Arts potency, 520. Grit potency, 475. Grit and Dark Arts potency, 650. Blood Cage costs 50. Okay, this is a 
beautiful ability. And it is amazingly pretty, and when you crit it, you just feel like, oh, gosh! It's basically a Dark Knight felt that's, that's all it is, is a Dark Knight felt -proof. I have not noticed, in testing, a difference between in-grit, out-of-grit, Dark Arts points. It's literally just a way to fell cleave. It's basically, like I said, it's Dark Knight fell cleave in our out of tank stance. It's going to do amazing damage. Next up, we have the Blackest Knight. Creates a barrier around self that absorbs damage totaling 20% of your maximum HP, or around a party member that absorbs damage totaling 10% of your maximum HP. Duration 5 seconds, blood increases blood gauge by 50, 1 full, 20 or 10% is absorbed. This is basically another cooldown for Dark Knight. Or, if you got a tank in a, if your co-tank is in a tight spot, you can shield him there. The thing about this is, you need to think in advance and save up MP. It takes 24 MP, 2400 in, it takes 2400 MP, so that's basically you're losing your Dark Arts. So you gotta think in advance, and be able to use it correctly at the same at a safe time to where you're not going to lose DPS either. Now, when I say you're not going to lose DPS, I mean you could be spending it on you could be spending that MP on a, a Blackest Knight, or you can be spending it on a Dark Knight's Blood Spill. So, it's a great skill to have. I love it. It's an extra CD for Dark Knights. It puts them, you know, in comparison to, um, you know, it's basically they're, they're almost on a warrior's level, in my opinion, in terms of CDs now. Because of, uh, they got something that's equal to um, Inner Beast. The difference is this can be placed on other people, and it actually costs you uh, DPS, unlike Inner Beast, which, you know, it's kind of up in the air. Um, Now, something else I want to talk about. Okay, one last thing I want to talk about. Dark Knight AoE Aggro Rotation. See this here? Unleash. Deals unexpected damage with a potency to of 50, that is 5-0, to all nearby enemies. Additional effect, increased enemy T. Okay. And it costs, at level 70, 1080 MP. Okay. Bizzle Drain deals unexpected damage with a potency of 120, so 70 more potency to target and all enemies nearby it. Additional effect, increased enmity, so it does the same thing as Unleash, and you can Dark Arts it to absorb a portion of damage dealt as HP. MP costs 1,320, so for 240 more MP, you are getting 70 more potency. What does that mean? One, more damage. Things are going to die faster. Two, increased threat. Let me tell you, threat is not just determined by enmity moves and tank stance. It is determined by damage. Why do you think healers, I mean, not just, well, healers too, but why do you think DPS are always so... High and they have to use aggro manipulation when they're fighting a boss because their DPS is what's generating threat on them. So it's the same thing for tanks. Your damage generates threat. The thing is, your damage is less than a DPS. So you're, it's why you can't just, you know, depending on the group, um, how well you're coordinating and stuff, you tanks are very careful about getting out of tank stance sometimes, so they can do their DPS combo and still maintain threat, because in the DPS stance, pretty much everything you do gives you threat. It even says it right there. Reduces damage by 20% while reducing damage dealt by 20% and increasing enmity. So pretty much everything you do gives you enmity with your aggro combo, giving you will put and take you from take somebody from this to that. Like, so you're gonna wanna go with this once you get it. Level fifty six 
If you're leveling Dark Knight, just spam a Blizzard Drain to for mobs. For damage, for enmity, for everything. It's going to be great. Now, let's talk gear problems. Right now, I'm in my full VIT set. And you might be saying, but Team Money, a full VIT set is what you should be wearing. Wrong. I wear a full VIT set because when I go into an expert roulette, I don't know who I'm getting as a healer. When I go into a, any type of roulette, I don't know who I'm getting as a healer. That means I probably don't trust you. And it's nothing personal. It's just... Uh, healers... You know, if I don't know you, I, I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know what you're thinking. I don't trust you to keep me alive. Hell, if I even go in with a healer I trust, the first few times we start running the fight, we're probably going to... Tanks are going to be in full vit. Strength melded. And have that little safety net to keep us alive and, you know, try and clear the fight. And as we start clearing it, we start farming it, we start saying, oh, this only does, you know, with a cooldown, 10k damage in, you know, out of tank stance. Okay, so we can start dropping, you know, X amount of HP. Healers, just make sure when you see the tank buster, I'm topped up. Things like that. We can start coordinating things like that. So... Let me show you what I am equipped with. Oh, I'm still in fucking combat. I have two gear sets for my tanks. Ah, fuck. Okay, here we go. Alright, and... Granted, I need to meld this with VIT so I can freaking make it a little bit easier. That's on my to-do list. But... I'm using full 270 sit on the right side. Full 270 slaying? Really? Why am I having to use this to increase my damage? This change was god awful, Square Enix. You should go back to what it was. It was fine with what it was with the bit strength. Hell, or if you're gonna freaking just tell us, sorry tanks, your damage doesn't matter, don't let me wear this stuff. Because I'm gonna wear it. I'm gonna fucking wear it because it increases my damage. You want to know why I know it increases my damage? Look, attack power, right there. Right fucking... You know what, fuck it. I'm not even going to try and point. You can see it on my mouse. Attack power. Affects the amount of damage... De affects amount of damage dealt by physical attacks. The higher the value, the more damage dealt. Look at it. With full slaying on. 1,959. That's almost 2,000. That is almost 2,000. Okay. Now, let's switch to my full vid set. With strength melt, it's 1,644. Okay, 1,644. Well, yes, it is higher than at the end of Heaven's Ward because it's only higher in full vid with strength melt of Materia 5s because you have all this shit right here. And... I, I see on Reddit, tanks are having issues holding hate because of this change. Square Enix, please, for the love of God, just scale it off a bit. Let us wear two, you know, 310 strength accessories. Give us something. Please, because this change was not good. Because tank DPS is down, which means threat is down. Even in tank stance, I feel very... Oh my god, I gotta do a threat combo because I, I, I think I'm getting pretty close. Unless I do a tank swap and we shirk, and then he's still at the top, you know, he's next on the list. So it's, it's really a tight, very tight, very frustrating change we have to deal with. That is probably my biggest gripe about tanking in this game right now, is that I need to have two sets of gear. One strength, one vit for the various situations. Because I cannot hold threat effectively if the DPS is doing more damage and threat than I can maintain. If I shout use diversion, that's only going to work for so long and then I'm back to spamming my enmity combo. Why should I have to do that? Why should I have to spend? Why should I have to decrease my DPS just so they can, you know, 
um, you know, not have to do... Okay, so maybe, I, okay, so maybe, I, you know, I, I'm probably speaking to an unpopular opinion to some people. I'm saying, saying, why should I increase, decrease my DPS? Well, here's the thing. Taint DPS does matter. If you're, if, let's say we got a fight, you know, and the DPS check is, you know, a 1,200 group DPS. All right, we're just throwing out numbers now. And we're at 1,100 DPS, okay? Everybody is doing everything they can. There is no way we can squeeze out that, you know, extra 100 DPS, okay? That's where the tanks need to start making up. That's where the healers need to start making up. You fixed it with healers because it now scales off a fucking mine, or a fucking... Is it, is, it, is it mine? Yeah, yeah, it's mine, it's mine. Yeah, that you scale D healer, you fixed healer DPS, and then you fucking fucked up tank DPS. Like, I'm okay with going full strength on my right side. I got no problem with that, but don't roll lock me out of it, because it's not fair to tanks. We like to do big, di big damage too. It's part of the job because damage equals threat. Threat equals tanks doing their jobs. Tanks doing more DPS equals to maybe clearing a fight. Because if your DPS is just physically incapable, for whatever reason, of doing more damage, they're doing everything they can, the healers are DPSing as much as they can, but they can't DPS, they can't have 100% of time DPS. They have to heal. So they can't be relied on to make up for, you know, whatever amount of X amount of DPS you need to clear a fight. The only people who have 100% uptime of doing damage that can potentially increase that DPS more are your tanks. And you roll lock them out of any way to actually increase their damage significantly to do that damage. By roll locking them out of accessories, we are hurt more than we are now. Now, I'm not even going to touch tenacity because it barely felt, feels like it. I've heard people say uh, it's 1,000 for 1% 1 mitigation. It's, you know, I'm glad Perry is gone because just seeing that just made me feel like it was asininely useless on my gear. But this new stat tenacity doesn't feel... Like it's doing anything at all, I, and that's mind you, I could be completely wrong. And if I meld everything tenacity-wise, which could be y'all's intent, but no one's gonna do that if it's barely a, a gain. I'm not gonna meld tenacity because it, it feels like it's barely a gain. So, because here's the thing, Square Enix. Let me tell you, damage is king. It's not mitigation. There is nothing. This is literally just extra mitigation that we honestly don't even need. We, our mitigation was fine. If you're going to get rid of parry, just just get rid of it. Just get rid of an extra stat. Put more crit. Put more dead on. Put more skill speed on. Put stats that we care about on. Hell, give us the direct hit rate. That's something else. Why can't tanks have direct hit rate? Why, why can't we have direct hit rate? I mean, I've literally melded full left side direct hit rate. I've gotten direct crits, so I know it works. I've seen an 11k direct hit siphon strike. I think I was in full sling, too. So that's... So, I know that it's there. I know that it works for tanks. Why the hell am I gonna, you know... Why am I gonna take this tenacity in meld when I could take direct hit rate and actually gain something? I don't know, I could be crazy. I could be very much crazy. And they're gonna buff the fuck out of tenacity. You know? And say, oh, don't worry, it's fine, you got tenacity. And I'm like, yeah, the tenacity does not make up for losing strength. Your calculations were wrong. Newsflash, wrong, wrong. W-R-O-N-G, wrong. When you, as you level up, as we put on new gear, we should 
feel like we are gaining power. Now, I can understand if you decide, okay, we're, we're kind of seeing like 500k numbers, huge ass numbers, the numbers are so big, we can't fucking, the screens can't cope, so we're going to scale everything down, scale it down, scale it down, scale it down, to where, you know, it's like this, these flat numbers almost, or something like that, I don't know how you're going to address power creep in later, late, in later expansions and stuff, but I should not feel like I have barely grown stronger as a character. From the end of 3.0, the end of 3.x, I am doing about the same, maybe, it feels like. I mean, I could be wrong, but it feels like I'm doing just about, like, I'm doing maybe, like, a fourth more, 25%, 30% more, and that's being generous. I want to say, it doesn't feel like I've grown stronger as a Dark Knight. feels like anything, I'm... I'm I mean, I've grown stronger, yeah, but it just barely feels like I've grown, gotten the amount of strength that we deserve from going to 60 to 70. So, and tenacity is not helping. So, yeah. So anyway, those are my early thoughts on the job. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, please comment below if you have uh, anything you want to say. Um... If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. Uh, we're going to be working on a Paladin video next, so uh, stand by for Paladin. Till then, thanks for watching. Take care. We're out.